All right, everybody, this is Ross. Today we're going to talk about apple trees and we're going to be uh, giving you guys a realistic point of view. I've been growing fruit now for eight years. And although I have not really experienced, I would say, apples to its fullest genetic diversity and really had the best homegrown garden experience of apples, um, I can give you guys a really, a very realistic point on apple trees. And so one of the reasons why actually I haven't covered apples all that much here on the channel is because they don't really do well for me here. They have not performed uh, up to the standard of what you would expect. And a lot of that has to do with the placement of the trees. And so my apple trees were all on dwarfing or semi-dwarfing rootstock before I sawed out a lot of them. And we had them in this plot right back here. Um, behind it actually are muscadine grapes against the fence. On the left were three vines of Labrusca, uh, Labrusca grapes. In front of it now we have fig trees, uh, and then on the right here is a gumi vine, a gumi bush, excuse me, that I really, really enjoy. And so, if you look at all the things in this plot right here, and there's even a honeyberry over there, we've got alpine strawberries in this bed. Uh, all these things I really love. And so, when you have apple trees in this plot, there was 20 of them, and they were planted so close together. I did my best. I thought I could make this work. There just wasn't enough light. This plot over here as an, on its own, just the amount of daylight this area gets at the yard is not enough, uh, let alone for apple trees. But if you are gonna plant so many apple trees together like that in this high dense planting, uh, you're gonna struggle. You're just not gonna get enough light. And so here's some of the trunks, right? I mean, you can imagine, look how close these trunks are together. And uh, the next one over, see where's the next trunk is about 18 inches away or two feet away so i had 20 apple trees in this plot again planted basically two feet apart and in every hole was two trees and i had two rows of them and so i had 20 trees in here actually 30 varieties in total because i grafted a number of varieties onto those existing trees and so we have not really had anything to show for it. And so I'm realizing after learning these last eight years about the importance of sunlight, yeah, I'm just really shooting myself in the foot here. You know, I'm basically kicking myself in the shin because I've been doing it the wrong way. I've been doing it like this and just kind of hoping that something comes out of it. And the realistic thing I should have been doing is actually maximizing sunlight and having less apple trees in this given area because I don't get enough sunlight to begin with. And so when you don't get enough sunlight, you gotta do everything you can to make sure that everything in this area, especially everything even down here, is getting enough light. We're right under two really big shade trees. The sun rises over there. And then so when it finally gets to the middle of the day and even sets over there in the west side of the property, that's the only time we're really getting any light in this area is when actually the sun is setting. So it's just not a great place for apples. It just isn't. Um, I don't have a great place for these apple trees. It just is what it is. We would definitely prefer as much sunlight as possible. Definitely light earlier in the morning versus actually later in the afternoon. Uh, that'll help with disease and um, drying the trees off and and you know, it's just overall better for most fruit trees. But these apples, I think, are it's not just about sunlight for these apples because it's also about the sunlight of the other things in the plot, right? So the Gumi's now gonna get more light. The, the grapevines back here are gonna get more light. And now that I've thinned these out, each individual apple tree is gonna get more light. And so I wish I could position them a little bit better. It just kind of is what it is. But some of these now I've selected very particular varieties that I'm keeping. And so that's kind of why some of these are aligned the way that they are. Now this tree here actually, because I decided to keep the best tasting apple trees I have, the best tasting apple varieties I have, and cut out the ones that are just whatever. And you know what? A lot of them, you could get a similar quality at the store. You know, I would argue that growing apples at home is gonna net you typically a much better tasting apple uh, than what you can get at the store or even a farmer's market or even going to pick the apples yourself at an orchard because you can choose the variety that you want. 
But if you're gonna grow Enterprise, or you're gonna grow Honeycrisp, or you're gonna grow some other apple that's at the store, there are people who have been growing apples their maybe even their whole life <laughs> that can grow apples way better than you and are gonna produce a product that's pretty darn good. And so there's no real reason for me, as an example, to grow Honeycrisp. And so I cut out my Honeycrisp apple, I cut out my Enterprise apples, I cut out my apples that you would find at the store. And so this is kind of what they look like now. You know, this is basically how big all the trees were, if you can kind of imagine it. And so now I'm chopping them all up into bits. I've already chopped up a number of them, but I figure, you know what? Before I chop all of them up, let me show you guys some of the evidence of what I've done. And so this could be a little bit crazy to some people. This can come off as like, wow, Ross, you put all this time into these fruit trees and now you're cutting out so many of them. But it's like, you know what guys, you have to cut out some of these to make the other one shine. You know, when you over plant and you overcrowd and maybe you get a little carried away when you first start out because, you know, you're not getting fruit right away. It takes a while. So you have the tendency to plant a lot more than you originally uh, anticipated to try to get as much fruit as you can early on. And then eventually you learn later on, which is my big tip of this video, you know, things get out of control real quick. So the only way to fix that is to either, you know, have more sunlight in general or cut things out, move things around. And so that's just kind of the inevitability of just something you may have to go through if you're sort of new to this. So the varieties I kept, because again, if I'm gonna grow an apple, I'm gonna grow a really tasty apple. I'm not gonna grow the ones you can get at the store or the farmer's market. It's gonna be to try to get ones that are exceptional. And so here's one actually here that performs pretty decent actually, even in this lower light spot is called Hawaii. And so Hawaii actually uh, produces a, an apple that tastes like pineapple and it does, it tastes so good. A few years ago, maybe a couple years ago, I had uh, a couple apples off of this tree and it's been a, a very impressive. And now that it's getting more light, it's definitely in a better position than maybe a couple of these. But uh, yeah, I'm excited for that apple in the future. We also have King David. This is well regarded as one of the best tasting apples. And so this tree is going to get a whole lot more light. and. You know they're gonna fill in more of a more space because a lot of them are growing out in one particular direction and not growing out kind of where they should um and so half of the tree on some of these you know because i kind of had to cut this in the middle here and keep the middle clean and clear so i imagine this king david and some of these others will start growing out this way and filling in more space now over here this is actually a branch that i grafted you can see the graft union here of Gravenstein. And so Gravenstein also is well regarded as one of the best tasting apples. The rest of this tree I could care I could care less for, but I'm not going to prune it out just yet because I'm going to wait until March or you know deep into the winter, early spring before I cut this off and then I'm going to leave just this graft, just this single stem whip here essentially. And this will now be the new tree. Um that this particular uh, variety works from. I'm just gonna stake the branch there and then it'll start forming a much larger tree uh, of that variety rather than growing some of the other varieties I had on here like, uh, what's this, State Fair. I don't even know what that tastes like. This one down here is Black Oxford, which is supposed to be actually a pretty darn good apple. Maybe I'll keep that. And then there's Enterprise, which is what the whole thing is, is grafted on. And then of course I have over here, which is a, supposed to be a pretty interesting apple, is Sweet 16. I think this one's red fleshed, and so I've never had a red fleshed apple. We also have Golden Russet on this one, which is a nice russeting apple. But I think I'm gonna remove this limb and only leave the State Fair limb. And then uh, what I'm gonna be doing, actually over here I've already planted one of the apples I dug up, one that I really liked or at least that I think I'm gonna really like more than the golden russet and planted it over here in much more sun uh, by the garden. And so this guy already cut the top off of it and uh, we'll probably do a little bit of staking and maybe a little bit of minor pruning on this tree, but this is St. Edmund's russet. And so this is a really, supposed to be one of the best, if not the best tasting russet. 
never had a russet apple can't get them at the store so well worth growing something like that i also realized over here i pruned off a variety called blue paramane and so this is supposed to be also a very good apple variety and so we can always regraft some of those onto these trees it's not really that difficult and so now essentially we're growing the better apples we're giving the ones that exist here more light and everything else around it more light the labrusca grapes are going to do better the muscadine grapes are going to do better um, and i can plant now things over here this is now some additional light and this tree is going to be chopped pretty much down in half this tree is going to be chopped a little bit off and so i even have a spot back in here where my plan is to plant a cornelian cherry and so over the next three or so years it'll get some nice size i'll get to taste some fruit and then eventually maybe i can dig it up and take it somewhere else with me wherever i decide to move and so elegant cornelian cherry is supposed to be one of those really tasty cornelian cherries and i've never had them so i'd rather try that and it's more shade tolerant than these apples it doesn't get too big it's probably you can maintain it at about eight feet and so uh yeah that's it that's the video here on the apples we're just being realistic i thank you guys here for watching hit that subscribe button and uh we'll talk to you guys soon all right take care